Think about the things that you have accomplished and the things that uh, you have done up until this time, this point that we're standing now. God, Isaiah said, forget all that. It's nothing compared to what I am going to do. <laughs> oh, my God, if that's, mm, that should be very encouraging to a whole lot of people right there. Yeah, God said, forget about all you have done, all you have accomplished, all you have seen. That don't mean nothing. I'm just to do something cold-blooded. Verse 19 says, for I am about to do something new. Look at your neighbor and say new. See, I've already begun. Look at the prophetic word. I have already begun to do. I've already begun. Do you not see it? I will make a pathway through the wilderness. Think about the wilderness. I will create rivers in the dry wasteland. Mm, think about a desert. You don't usually find no water. He said, I'm going to make a pathway. I'm going to cause water, my God, to appear in the desert. Some of us right now, even though we're here, we're in a, a desert situation. We're in desert places right now. And God just spoke to you and said, I'm getting ready to change that. Oh, but you got to be willing to receive it. Mm. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Minister Janice. The wild animals in the fields will, make, will thank me. Ooh, Lord. And the jackals and owls, too. Now, don't let the animals give God the glory in the human beings. I, mm, my God, the animals appreciate what God is doing, and the people do not. Uh, he said, I'm giving, they thank, they thank me, the animals, animals, my forgiving them water in the desert. He said, yes, I will make rivers in the dry wasteland so my chosen people can be refreshed. Father God, thank you for the few minutes. I thank you, Lord, for the next level, Lord. Mm. Thank you for what you're about to say and what you're about to do. Encourage your people, strengthen your people. Father God, we have shifted. It's no longer dragging the clubs. It's no longer dragging the flesh. Flesh can't go into the promised land, Father God. That should have died in the Red Sea. That should have been left at 3434. We have crossed over, and now we are possessing, moving deeper into that which you have blessed us with, Father God. And now, Father God, it's time to possess and occupy, Father God, and move forward for advancing your kingdom, Lord. So touch us right now. Clip away, destroy. We receive the prophetic word, Father God. Do a new thing. Do a new thing. Send us some refreshing. Send us some water in the dry places in our lives, Father God. Break up the stony ground in our thoughts, like Father God. Raise our level of expectation, Father God. Give us hope again, Father God. Your word says, Abraham, against all hope, yet in hope, believe God. Oh, my God, don't let us lose hope, Father God. In the name of Jesus, Father God, we honor you. In Jesus' name we pray. Come on and say amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Well, it's good to be in the house of the Lord tonight. I believe God got an encouraging word. I want to read that again. Mm. But before, but forget all that. It is nothing compared to what I'm going to do. See, sometimes you got to learn how to encourage yourself. I don't know about you, but all of us is facing something. We've accomplished a lot of things in life, uh, but God says, forget all that. That don't matter right now. Uh, I got something else I want you to do. Sometimes one of, you, ooh, one of the greatest hindrance to uh, 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 forward progress is that we tend to rest on past victories. Uh, some of us have been fighting so long, and when God do something, we, we, we park right there. We act like it ain't nothing else for him to do. Uh, some of us, my God, life been on top of it for so long. Now that uh, we've seen a little, uh, come on. A little light at the tunnel, we think that's all God has for us. But God got so much for you. Do you believe that? I do. If you don't, you're sitting in it. Somebody give God a hand. My God. First said, come on, y'all got to come with me. Somebody give God a hand in this place tonight. Y'all not the only one. Come on, somebody give God a hand. Oh, my God, that he's going to do a new thing. That he got great things in store for you. Mm. Oh, my God. Mm. He says, I'm about to do something new. You have to believe that. You have to make the scriptures personal. He's talking to you. Forget all that. Forget all you've done. Forget the bad, good, and the different. Forget your past. Forget all that. I'm about to do something new. But you got to give God an opportunity to do something new, to do something new. Oh, my God. That's why he said, I can't give you new wine. You're stuck in old wine. You're stuck in the past. Uh, you let your past and your mistakes and your guilt and the shame and all that keep you from receiving what I have for you. I can't do it. He wants to do it. Is anybody going to let him do it tonight? Do anybody need God to do something new? Do anybody need a refreshing? Do anybody need a fresh touch? 
Ah, amen. Okay, y'all with me, y'all with me. Uh, how many of you are ready by the showing of hands to go to the next level? Let me see your hands. Now, see, what all y'all just done is made heaven a witness to what your hands. You just made heaven a witness. Okay? It is God's desire for us to be fruitful and multiply. Write that down. I'm going to teach you tonight. I'm not going to get hyped. It's God's desire for you to be fruitful and multiply. You need to understand that. It's not God's desire for you and I to live in mediocrity, barren, wandering around life aimlessly and die empty in that capacity. Are y'all with me so far? If you are going to multiply, it means that you're going to have to move to the next level. It means you should be moving up to new levels. Oh, my God. Into new levels of fruitfulness and progress all of the time. So the title of this sermon is Moving Up to the Next Level. I promise you I'm going somewhere. Look at your neighbor and say it's time to move up. Now, if you was here Sunday, you caught the prophetic word that God showed, my God, one of my coverings about the church, about going up the mountain. Uh, everybody couldn't go, but the disciples went up the mountain. And so in order to move up to the next level, my God, there's some things that you and I have to do. The first thing you and I are going to have to do, you're going to have to believe that God wants you to go up the mountain. If you don't believe, my God, you are always stay at the bottom. You are always settle. You will always make excuses. You will always tell yourself that I'm not qualified. I don't look the part. I'm not educated. My God, come on, somebody. Uh, uh, I got too many wounds. Too, if, I, if, if I go up the mountain, then, then people are going to bring up my past. My, so I'm just going to stay in the back because I don't want people. Because, you know, when you step out into leadership, and you step out of, the, out of the dark into the light, then you you expose. Some people don't want to be exposed, so they'll stay in darkness. Come on, somebody. They'll just sit there. <laughs> point number one, put it on the screen. In order to move up, move to the next level, what's your vision for moving forward? What's your vision? What's your vision? You must have a vision. Of course, everybody's familiar with Habakkuk. They write the vision down and make it plain. You need a vision in life. I promise you that Lawrence Peoples has a vision, naturally as well as spiritually. How about you? Do you still have a vision? Are you still dreaming like I told you three or four months ago at 34, 34 to continue to dream? Don't stop dreaming. And many of you came up to me after this sermon and said, Pastor, thank you because I had stopped dreaming. I had stopped hoping. I had lost all hope. I was ready to throw the towel in. Don't do it. God is doing a new thing. Yeah. Mm, mm, mm. If you have no vision for tomorrow, you will have nothing to move forward towards. If you have no vision of tomorrow, you're not going to have anything to move towards no vision if you have no vision for tomorrow what are you going to move towards if you have no vision for tomorrow what are you going to try to accomplish when God wake you up and get you out of bed what is your what, 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 what do you aspire to do what do you feel like you need to accomplish what do you have before you my God that's going to challenge you to do better than you did yesterday because some of the trials and tribulations, my God, that you and I, I and you are facing, my God, is to make you and mold you. It's not to break you. It's to make you and mold you. But if you look at it from the wrong perspective, my God, something that God has brought into your life, my God, to move you forward and up the mountain, you will self-sabotage. You will see this, God don't love me. I'm sick and tired of being sick and tired. And so something that was brought into your life to make you and push you up the mountain, my God, you will self-sabotage as I just stated. You won't see it as a blessing. You won't see it as a tool in God's hand to use to get you prepared to go up the mountain. Y'all got to stay with me, my God. You got to stay with me. You got to stay with me. All throughout the Bible, you see examples of God planting vision and dreams into people's heart to make sure, my God, that they have a vision to move forward. God uses visions to move you forward. Vision. Sight is where you're at. Vision is where you're going. Mm. Sight, sight, sight. Sight is what you see. You know what I'm saying? Vision is where you're going. In order to see farther, sometimes you got to go up. You got to go up the mountain so you can see farther. See, I can only see so far down on the ground, but sometimes you got to re reposition yourself and shift and go up, my God, so you can see farther. God is trying to take some of you up, my God, the mountain so you can see farther because all you see is what's in front of you. And all that you see is discouraging you. All that you see is frustrating you. All that you see, my God, you don't see no hope, my God. You don't see this is mine. God, I'm tired of dealing with it. I'm tired of fight. But God is trying to position you to go up the mountain so you can see beyond your trials. You can see beyond the things that you are going through. Come on, somebody. Somebody give God a hand. Y'all come on, church. And God is speaking tonight. 
Amen, says Janice. My God, God is trying to move you up the mountain so you can see different. Reposition yourself, my God, because all you can see is trials. All you can see is pain. All you can see is hell. Come on. All you can see is situations, my God, is grieving you, my God. All some of us see is guilt and shame, my God, and failure. That's all you see. Shift. Somebody say shift. Shift. And go up the mountain so you can see past all that. Oh, my God. Some of y'all, my God, in your life, all you see is mountains. Oh, my God. Mm. Some mountains you can't go around, baby. Some mountains you're going to have to clam. Let me say it again. Some mountains you cannot go around. You're going to have to clam. I couldn't go around my former addiction. I had to deal with my addiction. I had to allow God to deal with my addiction and set me free. Come on, somebody. Some of y'all trying to over- go around something that God has called you to conquer. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. God planted a dream inside Moses mm. to deliver the children out of bondage. God planted a dream in Moses. God planted a dream in Moses. Moses had a head on encounter with a burning bush and it started the process of transformation in his life. And God began to raise him. What is God trying to use? What is God trying to use and who is God trying to use to plant vision in you to get you ready for the plan and the purpose that he has for you? What is God trying to use? Who is God trying to use, my God, to plant vision in you or to awaken the vision that he's already put in you? Who is God trying to use to bring refreshing to the vision that you already know you're called to do? Some of you already know know what God has called you to do, but you, you, you you have dried up. You have become a valley of dry bones. And so God is trying to water God is trying to breathe on that which you already know you are called to do. So who is God and what is God trying to use to prepare you for what he has called you to do? Vision is so critical. You and I cannot move forward without vision. Turn with me to the book of Proverbs 29, 18. Let me read this scripture. Proverbs 29, 18. As I begin to look at this, this spoke to me. Mm. Thank you, Lord. Uh Uh-huh, moving up. Uh, Moving up the mountain. Do you want to go? 29. What did I say? 29, 18. Uh, It says, when people do not accept divine guidance, they run wild. But whoever obeys the law is joyful. Replace divine guidance with vision. God is trying to give you a vision for your life. Vision will point you in the right direction. Vision will keep you from getting on the wrong road. Vision will keep you, my God, from connecting with the wrong people. Vision will protect you from getting involved in unhealthy situations. Because if you know what your vision is, you're not going to let anything just connect with your vision. Especially if it's going to cause you to to stay on the ground instead of take flight. Vision will keep you, church. Oh, my God, you need a vision. We need a vision. Somebody say, "I I need a vision. Amen. Amen. Y'all starting to get with me. Amen. I know we got to adjust to the new spot. Come on. My God. Do, what, what, does, what does vision look like? Let me ask you this question. As a husband and wife, what do your vision look like? As a husband and wife, what do your vision look like? What do your vision look like for your marriage? Y'all know I'm talking to myself as well. What do your vision look like? Single women, what do your vision look like? Are you kept being single? Do you have a vision of being kept? They missed that. Do you have a vision of being kept? Remember, vision will keep you. Vision will keep you. Come on, somebody. Vision will cause you to be me. Vision will cause you to be disciplined. Oh my God. Oh my God. So, so what type of vision do you have as a single man or a single woman? Uh, what type of vision do you have as married couples? Oh, that cut, but it's all good. If you're in a transition place. And, it is, and it's a difficult transition, transition that you need a vision. Some of you are in transitional seasons in your life. And I'm not talking about going from church to church. That's not what I'm talking about. There are some decisions that you have to make. That's a transition. There are some people that got to be clipped. There are some, there are some decisions that got to be added to your life. There are some things that God is asking you to implement into your life. You have to make some decisions. My God, come on, somebody. All of us should be in a transitional state. You should be constantly be moving. You should constantly be growing because God called you and I to be multipliers. He called us to be fruitful, church. If you're not bearing no fruit, my God, you are just stagnant and eventually you're going to die. 
Y'all know Wednesday is my favorite service because I get to teach you real thorough and deal with the root system. So are you fruitful? Who is being impacted behind your walk? Who from Facebook is reaching out to you saying, can we have coffee? Yeah. Now I'm not talking. <laughs> yeah. who, 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 who is wanting to come to know the God that you talk about? Yeah. Who ha ha have your social media invited? How is your, thank you, Holy Ghost, how is your social media, how is our, thank you, Holy Ghost, because I don't want nobody to think I'm Georgia, how is our social media, my God, advancing God's kingdom? Is it advancing your agenda? Is it advancing God's kingdom? Who wants to be affected by the God that you profess to serve? Who is being affected by the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob? My God, behind all of the social media. Oh, my God, because we spend more time on social media and we spend little time on getting vision and guidance from the Holy Constitution. So you got to ask yourself, my God, how is my social media advancing God's kingdom? See, that to shift your mind right there. Because then that means you, what you post ought to be advancing God's kingdom. What you say ought to be bringing glory and honor to God. He said, if I be lifted up, that would draw all men unto me. So how is social media, Instagram, and all this stuff I got advancing, I'm redundant, God's kingdom? Do you got a vision for social media? Are you just want to be seen? Are you just want to be heard? Or you just want to rat and rave? I'm just asking typical questions because some of us are dealing with that type of stuff. What vision? See, you need a vision for everything. Vision for your finances. Vision for your kids. Vision for your future. Vision for your marriage. Vision to keep your car clean. Vision to keep gas in your car. Vision to save. Come on. Vision for 401k. You need vision for everything. Oh, my God. Mm. In order to move up the mountain, you need a vision. In order to shift, you got to have a vision. In order to progress, you got to have a vision. In order to claim, you need a vision. Some of us got to go back and get our vision off the altar. You got to get back on the altar, get some real fire, get some real revelation. Oh, my God. Oh, uh, you can't get it from a book, baby. You got to go on the altar and get it. This is where you get it at, right? That's why I thank God, my God, for the intimate worship that the woman of God led us into. It wasn't no flesh. That was all intimacy right there. And I looked around. Some of us are uncomfortable with that because we used to listen to all of those stuff that make you groove and make your flesh get all excited. But when you come, oh, my God, when you get that worship to make you lay down in the presence of the Lord. Just make you think. Open me up, God. Change what you will. Change what you want to. See, we ain't used to that type of stuff. Mm. Good vision. Good vision, good vision, good worship. Mm. How many of y'all feel like you're in some transitional place? Let me, let me see your hand. Amen. So if you're in a transitional place, transitional season, you got to do just what Alicia just sung about. Lord, open me up. Yes, Jesus. You got to tell yourself like I told myself when me and my son was back there praying, God, I have not arrived. I'm still small in your eyes. Don't never let me get ahead of you. See, so you got to know how to talk to God. And I meant everything I said. I have not arrived, Don Don. I got a whole lot of more work to do, man of God. And God has blessed my soul, Brother Jason, but I got a whole lot of work to do. I ain't intoxicated off of this campus. It's made with, with increase come major responsibility. And so, therefore, I want to see who's going to go up the mountain with me. I ain't forgotten what the man of God prophesied in this building. Oh, I'm finna see, because he now already started clipping, but he's clipping for the comeback. That's all good. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. What is ahead of you? When you're in a transitional place, you got to look at what is ahead of you. Write this down, church. Or if you're in a transition place, you know, transition or transitional place, ask yourself, what is ahead of me? What challenges am I getting ready to face? Don't you know what promotions come new devils, as we say? New challenges, but not just new devils, but new opportunities for God to get the glory. <laughs> oh, my God. We ain't going to always magnify the devil. We're going to magnify God. A new challenge to give God an opportunity to give you more, get more glory off your life, church. But you might come on. What is ahead of you? What does it look like? What does your transitional season look like? What does your transitional moment look like? Uh, what does it look like? What do you have to do? What timber? The Bible says in the book of Haggai, go up into the mountains and bring down timber. What do you need to work with? What tools do you need? Uh, uh, what people do you need to let go because you need to bring a different voice into your life? <laughs> who, my God, who, who do you need to disconnect from so you can get around the other people? If, you wanna, if, you, if you're struggling financially, get around people that's successful, my God. Uh, my God, my, you can just surround yourself around people, my God, who are successful at where you're trying to go. Quit hanging around people who can't take you nowhere. 
shift. Uh, you can't go up to a mountain with a mediocrity mentality. You got to shift your mentality to go up. Mm. Look at your neighbor and say, I'm moving to the next level. Let me give you this. The Hebrew meaning of vision is purpose. Hebrew meaning of vision is purpose. Form, creative imag imagination. Don't you know you have things on the inside of you that's waiting to be discovered? It's laying dormant. Untapped potential. Resources of the late doctor's teaching. There's so much inside of you, Shay. You ain't, and you and I ain't even scratched the surface. Tina, there's so much inside of you. But you got to be open. You got to have an eternal yes. Oh, my God. And don't you know, let me, let me uh, God just showed me this. And don't you know, it's hard for God to give you vision from heaven when you're bitter. Because all you're going to do is squander it away. He, he can't show you what you've been asking for because you got too much... Um, Shame, guilt, unforgiveness. See, we don't, we, we hear that stuff. We are so used to hearing that stuff, we don't even affect us no more. But you know, that stuff is killing the body of Christ. It's killing your purpose. It's killing your momentum. It's killing your joy. It's killing your excitement. It's, clear, it's killing us from climbing up the mountain. You can't sit in the presence of the Lord and stay bitter and angry and thank God going to open up the heavens, my God. You can have impure motives and thank God going to speak to you and drop revelation on you when you ain't going to when you going to mishandle it. It don't work like that. I'm trying to help you. Build a people and change lives. Don't forget what I'm called to do. You're asking for vision, like, God, I've been asking for vision for the last 10 years. Uh, ch ch uh, uh, look at our hearts. Look at our minds. That's what it comes down to. God can't pour new wine. Vision is new wine. New vision is new wine. Ooh, Sister Deneva, vision is new wine. So if you got an old mindset, you can't receive new revelation. <laughs> Somebody said, give me a new mind. Creative imagination. God told Abraham to look up to the stars. Y'all gonna like this. There were too many to count. He said he was going to have as many descendants as that. God dropped vision in Abraham. Abraham hadn't even had his earth yet. Isaac wasn't on the set yet. And God said, okay, shift. Go look up. He, he, he Look up. Ooh. Set your mind on things above. Look to the hills on what's coming by help. And my strength. Look up. He dropped vision in him. See all them stars? You can't count them. That's how many of your descendants are going to be if you can count them. He dropped vision in him. He deposited vision into him. But look what he did. He had to look like a fool. I, uh, I'm walking around looking up. What's wrong with him? He must be high. Juju must have relapsed. He's walking all around looking all up in the sky. You know what I'm saying? What's wrong with him? Sometimes you got to look like a fool while God is downloading inside of you. But he was depositing into Abraham vision. That was going to move him towards his purpose. The Bible says against all hope, against all hope. Listen to me, church, against all hope. Abraham believed God because he had hope in God. Against all hope, yet in hope. Against all hope, yet in hope. I'm saying it because I'm trying to teach you. You're looking at some, some cold-blooded situation, but against all hope, yet in hope. Faith, hope, and love. The greatest of these is what? But against all hope, yet Abraham believed God. Against all hope. Who dealing with some hopeless situations? Oh, my God. Won't y'all be honest? Who dealing with some? See, I, need, I need heaven to be a witness. See, I'm not ashamed. He said, if you be ashamed of me, I'll be ashamed of you. If you confess me before man, I'll confess you before my Father. Friend said, against all hope, yet in hope, God, Abraham believed God. He believed God against all hope because of hope he was able to believe. Oh, my God, because of hope, Jerah, he was able to believe. No matter what you're facing, get, uh, get some hope down in the side of you. That's why you got to say, God, here am I. I'm in a hopeless situation, but I'm going to stretch my hands towards heaven, and I'm going to believe against all hope, yet in hope, I'm going to believe. Mm. He told Abraham to look up. Look up. Somebody say, look up. look up. I promise you that's a prophetic word because some of you need to look up. You've been looking down for so long. Paul says, set your mind on things above. Think about the word of God. That's why you got to have the word of God on the inside of you so you can think on these things. Holy and pure, acceptable, all them different type of things. My God, you got to think on those things. Everything that comes against what the Constitution, meaning the word of God says, the Bible says, take every thought into captivity. Take every thought into captivity. To the obedience 
Ah, uh, stuff that speaks against purpose. That's why you got to know what the word of God says. So when stuff come against my God, your mind, you can quote the scripture. That's what Jesus did when the temptation came. He quoted the scripture. He stood in the power of the Holy Spirit. Ooh, are you with me so far? We losing battles because we ain't got no word in us. We losing battles because we ain't got no substance that's based, based on the word. Our foundation should be built on the word. And nothing else. It can't be built on denominations. It can't be built on my voice. It got to be built on the word of God, which is a solid rock. Come on, come on, church. Mmm, boy, that's good. Talking about going to the next level. Climbing up and moving up. Mm. Number two. In order to go up the mountains, we need to be trimmed. What needs to be trimmed in your life? You can't take baggage up the mountain. Good teaching word. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Been laboring. Been laboring. Woman of God says, drop some fresh. We do with Egypt. We do with the clubs. A new word in the house. Going up, going up, going up. Up the mountain. Somebody say, up the mountain. mountain. Oh, my God. Don't you know you got a clown, baby? You got to work. You need some tools when you're going up the mountain. Uh, you can't go up the mountain with the same old mindset. I'm redundantly saying that because many of us need to understand that things is not changing because our mindsets are not changing. When the mind changed, the life changed. Whoever get the mind, get the life. If God don't get the mind, God didn't got the life. If God get the mind, God will transform the life. Romans 12, whoever, come on, be, be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Transform. Go from a caterpillar to a butterfly by your mind. Don't you know that your mind is that powerful? That your mind can change the very course. Your thoughts can change the very course of your life. Overnight. Just thinking right. Thinking, my God, the way God told us to think. Set your minds on the things of God. Seeking first the kingdom of God and all of his righteousness, my God. Applying the word of God to your circumstances and situations. Don't you know sometimes God got to allow situations uh, and create situations so you can execute his word? He will create situations. And I say, now do what I taught you to do. And we don't do it. I missed an opportunity, my God, to go up the mountain. He created that so there could be a stepping stone to go up higher. And then you'll go through life and he'll create another situation so you can execute the word. And so you can go up the mountain a little higher. God is trying to use situations and circumstances to take you up to higher. But we're failing the test. When we're going, we going through, we fight flesh with flesh instead of spirit. With flesh. The Bible says put to death the deeds of the flesh by way of the spirit. So when you're doing battle, my God, when situations come, that's why you got to have the word of God so you can fight with the word of God. Because every time you win, you go up higher. Every time you win, you get more confidence. Every time you win a battle, my God, your faith gets stronger. Your hope gets stronger. A lot of us is hopeless because we're steady losing battles that we should be winning. Because we're doing church and not Christ. Oh, my God. <laughs> Uh, going off of Christ, give God a hand, please, 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 my God. Ask the Lord, ask the Lord, ask the Lord what needs to be trimmed or pruned, making good time in your life. What needs to be trimmed or pruned in our lives? I'm going to say loud right there. What needs to be trimmed or pruned in our lives? Some of us know, all of us know, it's probably two or three things right now. That will keep us from going up the mountain. We can't go to the next level because we're too heavy. With doubt, with shame. I don't even want to go there. But y'all know what we deal with. Everybody got a thing. Everybody's sitting up in there with a thing. Everybody's sitting up here with things. That's keeping you and I. Watch me y'all. From climbing up the mountain. See like every step we take. To go up, we could take five going backwards. Because you know why? That thing, or those things, is going to let you get to the mountain, the edge of the mountain. And when you decide to shift to go up the mountain, uh, that thing going to yank you. And you're going to come. Every time you tell him I'm done, my God, he's going to let you go to church, my God. But when you say I'm going to, he's going to yank you. <laughs> Unhealthy attachments. What's yanking you from going, ooh, thank you, Holy Ghost. What's yanking you? You, get, you, act, you, you, you done took a few steps. Uh, the devil don't mind you taking a few steps. But when you get to going too high, he going to yank. But I can't even say it's the devil. It's unhealthy attachments. What unhealthy attachment will keep you from climbing? And most of it is mental self-sabotaging. 
one of the number one weapons that's keeping us from climbing up the mountain. We tell ourselves we're not qualified because we let all of the mistakes speak louder than the promises. Ooh, that's heavy right there. We let all of our mistakes and things that has happened to us speak louder than the promises of God. God said, forget all that stuff. I'm doing a new thing. I got great things in store for you. I got houses you did not build, land, and all of those type of stuff. You got all kind of stuff, my God, that's afforded to a covenant believer, but we don't believe it. We don't believe it. We believe man's report before we believe God's report. We believe what the doctor say before we believe what the healer and who created the doctor say. Mm, mm, mm. Sometimes we get clutter. We get too much clutter in us and don't even realize it. I told y'all Sunday, my God, my mind was cloudy leading up to the, to, to the launch. And so, cause so much is going on. So much work had to be done. So much administrative, administrative work had to be done. My mind was cloudy. I was just laboring, 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 laboring. Oh, my God. But sometimes you get clutter. Uh, the great doctor, I mean, the, the, uh, uh, the, the woman of God, George Miles, talking about you got a cloudy mind. Uh, you, uh, in the battle for man, you got a cloudy mind. You get a clutter mind. Your, your mind. The mind, when it's cluttered. You can't focus. Your attention span is real low. You get agitated real easy. Uh, everybody make you mad. You're throwing stuff and breaking stuff and screaming and hollering and cussing and giving people all kinds. Uh, your mind is cluttered. You, no peace. Hope has escaped you. Joy of the Lord has eluded you. Teach us. That stuff got to be trimmed. Because it would keep you from going up the mountain. And guess what? God is trying to trim the stuff up out of our life so we can clam to the next level. God wants to do a new thing in this ministry. He wants to take this ministry to another level. And he is going to take the ministry to another level. That's why he positioned the ministry, my God, to be where we at. You see what I'm trying to say? Oh, my God, I thank God, I thank God. And so, therefore, clutter, 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 clutter. Don't you know one of the tools that the enemy used? The people that's close to you? Oh Y'all look at me. I'm just saying. Yeah, 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 Whatever they saying, filling your mind with clutter. Well, 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 da 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 I'm, I'm serious, y'all. I'm helping the church. This is what's going on in our minds right now as I stand here. We get bombarded with all type of negativity, all type of stuff. And the enemy got people that we think is supposed to be for us, the main people that keeping you from climbing up the mountain. Clutter. God's trying to trim that. Mm -hmm. What needs to be trimmed in our lives? Mm. Those things will hinder us from moving forward. Clutter will hinder you and I. Negative thoughts, low self-esteem, self-sabotage, telling yourself you're unworthy, not telling yourself you're fearfully and wonderfully made, as the Bible says, not reminding yourself that you're joint heirs and sons and daughters, as I've been teaching y'all for six years, you're kings and queens. You're not your mistakes. You're not your failures. Oh, my God. Come on, somebody. Oh, my God. What's hindering you from moving up? Clutter, clutter, clutter. God wants you to bear fruit. As a part of the process. Oh, as a part of the process, he prunes. He wants you and I to bear fruit, but a part of the process, he start cutting on you. Uh-oh. He says multiply and be fruitful. Genesis 1, 28. He told us to be multiplied and fruitful. And so in order for something to bear a lot of fruit, he got to cut it. See, we don't want to be cut. When God bring out them scissors, when he bring out that axe, come on somebody, all of a sudden now we want to run. We want to, oh my God, we're, when the praise and worship is high and our flesh is all excited, that's fine. But when God take us into intimacy like we was today, see, now he's cutting on you. Uh, see, 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 intimacy, intimacy, you know, getting that secret place, that quiet place where flesh was uncomfortable. My God, God is trying to cut. He's trying to prune, my God, so he can multiply. So you can be fruitful, church. How many want to be fruitful? Let me see your hand. Okay. He prunes so he can take things out. God is trying to take a lot of stuff out of all of us. Start with me. All of us so we can climb up the mountain and go to the next level. I promise you, you can shout about the next level. You can speak in tongues about the next level. You can dance about the next level. You can even sow, my God, to the next level. But don't mean you're going to go to the next level. You know how you go to the next level? Mine. 
as a man thinketh, so he becomes. Ooh, y'all don't understand that. That's a powerful weapon right there, baby. Mm, you got to quit telling yourself you can't and start telling yourself you can. Get a real revelation of Philippians 4.13 that I can do all things. Through Christ. If you really, don't you know if you really believe that you can do all things, don't you know your life will be completely different if you believe Philippians 4.13? If you really believe Philippians 4.13 that I can do all things through Christ who stood to me, there is nothing that's unhealthy, there is nothing that's on top of you, there is nothing that's hindering you that you won't overcome if you truly believe that I can do all things through Christ. Who strengthened me? No trial, no tribulation will make you tap out. Nothing that you encounter will make you quit. Nothing, my God, that you go through in life will get you so discouraged when you give up. Oh, my God, because you know that I can do all things. And if you really believe that all things are working together for the good, ain't no way in the world you will be discouraged and defeated. You will continue to triumph. You will use all that stuff as a stepping stone to go up the mountain to the next level. Mm, if you really believe it. Let me move. 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 Mm. God is trying to prune. Can I tell you this right here? This is very prophetic. Prophetic. God is trying to even prune stuff that he started. Sometime in God. Oh, amen, woman of God. Uh, she caught that back there. Things that he started, he'll prune. It's, it's over. Grace is lifted. It's time to shift. I started you right there. I planted you right there. You, you burn fruit and I shift. And so, God, my God, God loves you and I enough because he created us with a purpose. So, therefore, he will begin to prune even the stuff that he placed in you and started in you. Mm. To go up the mountain, you got to trim. Tanya, to go up the mountain, I got to trim. Jesus spoke to the masses. Then he spoke to the 144. Then he spoke to the 120. Then he spoke to the 72. Then he spoke to the 12. Then he spoke to the three. But he hung on the cross by himself. Every mountain got smaller and smaller and smaller. You start out with a lot of people, but as you continue to clam up, it gets smaller and smaller and smaller. Are you okay? So you got to get to the point like me and the woman of God. You got to be okay with God pruning and clipping. You got to be okay with it, uh, Denise. You got to be okay with it, Q. You know what I'm saying? That when God starts clipping, because everybody can't go. They didn't go with Christ. So what makes you think they're going to go with you? They didn't go with God in the flesh. So we is not God. I'm not God. You're not God. And so God couldn't get him to go. What makes you think you're going to get him to go? Quit having unhealthy expectation of people. Put people in a proper category. I'm talking to myself. That wasn't for y'all, that was for me. Put people in their proper, everybody can't go. Sometimes you got to go alone. Abraham, leave thy family and get ghosts. Leave the familiar, leave what you know. It's time to go. My God, vision. I, I, I can't bless you. I can't show you what I want to show you because you're stuck in the familiar. You're stuck in the familiar. Come on. You got to leave. Uh, you got to leave that what you know. My God, so I can begin to put vision in you. So I can begin to do the great things for you. If you obey me, I'm going to bless you. Uh, if you obey me, I'm going to bless you till your soul, my God, is overrunning with joy. Genesis chapter 12. Leave the familiar. Some of y'all can't go to the mountain, up the mountain because you won't leave the familiar. You won't let him go. You won't let it go. You won't let that go. You won't let she go. Her go. That go. That go. Uh, uh, the casino ain't going to get you up the mountain. Robbing God of your offering and tithes ain't going to get you up the mountain. Oh, yeah. Not forgiving ain't going to make you go. You got to let it go. Being holding grudges, getting offended about everything. Why? Because that, that, we, and it's sad. Y'all heard me say, why do we have to always reference stuff like that? Because you're always dealing with that in the body. Because you, if you're an effective church and people are coming to the ministry, you're going to always have that type of stuff going on. Because people should always be coming out of the world if we're being effective for God. If you are drawing people to the house of the Lord by social media, by your lifestyle and what have you, then you're going to always be dealing with people that's coming out the clubs, coming out of drugs. Just thank God, like I was talking to Pastor Debbie, she called me today, and just thank God they're here. I'm glad they got cigarettes and I, I come on, come on in here. You sure? Because I know I got the power to help you get free. I can't get nobody to say nothing right there. Some of you don't want them around because it's too much temptation for you. But when you said free, bring them around. Or when you've been delivered, they smoke cigarettes, whatever they eat. Come on, I can handle it. Healthy enough. Oh, you got the oil. You got some oil on you. 
Yeah, let me leave him alone. Let me leave him alone. Uh, John 15, 2 says this. He cuts off. This is prophetic. This is the word. He cuts off every branch of mine that doesn't produce fruit. And he prunes the branches that does bear fruit. So he cuts off branches that don't bear fruit. Now watch the verbiage. But he prunes those that do. Prune for the comeback. Prune so you can be healthier. Prune so you won't be cluttered. Prune so you can be more fruitful. Prune so he can position you to multiply. Prune so you can be a greater witness. Prune so you can be a greater testimony. Prune so your life can get God the glory. Everything God does, he wants the glory, baby. So he cuts whatever don't bear fruit, but he prunes that what does bear fruit. Oh, don't miss the revelation. Don't miss it, miss it. He cuts one, but prunes the other. You don't want him cutting on you. You want him pruning on you. I can't get nobody saying nothing right there. See, God does. So everything that's going on, it ain't the devil. It ain't the devil. As we move to our next level, there are some things that he has to cut off. Sometimes, as I said, we get cluttered. We get cluttered in us because we never allow, watch this, the spirit of God to convict you. But you know, when you don't allow, and I don't allow the spirit of God, when we harden our heart towards conviction, I told y'all if your convictions are five or less, you're in trouble. But when we don't submit, surrender to the Spirit, don't you know every time you disobey and I disobey the conviction of the Holy Spirit, it gets easier and easier to reject God's voice? The Spirit of God is God's voice. Anytime you can tell yourself, I'm not going to do it, and you know God told you not to do it, I mean, you do it and God told you not to do it, it gets easier and easier to disobey God's voice. And the more that we get to the point where, we eat, where it gets easy for us to disobey God's voice, we are in trouble, y'all. We are in trouble as a people of God where we no longer submit to the Spirit of the living God through God. That's, that's a bad place to be in. But God loves you and I enough that he would still try to send uh, the axe. He's going to have to use the axe for that. Yeah, you're going to have to hit us upside the head with something. Come on, somebody. Oh, I shouldn't have said that. We're on YouTube. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I say we get clutter. Be careful of not allowing the spirit of God to convict you. Let me move. Let me move because I'm heavy. I'm heavy. Sin, church. We're talking about what needs to be trimmed. Sin. Separate us from God. I know you don't hear too many pastors and too many people at this day and time talk about it, but I'm going to continue because Jesus wouldn't delay. Oh my God, Bishop Noel Jones said, How can you preach about Christ, but you never preach about what Christ preached about? How can you preach about Christ, but you never preach about what Christ preached about? Jesus didn't uh, tolerate sin, He didn't condemn the person, but He condemned the sin. See what I'm trying to say? And so, my God, people don't want to say that because they worry about the church being empty. Sin hinders you and I from moving to the next level. Yes, yes. Sin will block vision from getting to you. Oh, my God. Don't you know when God told Abraham, thank you, Holy Ghost, in Genesis chapter 12 to leave, my God, and go, and I'm going to bless you. Don't you know if he'd have stayed there, he would have disqualified himself out of disobedience. He would have had nobody to blame but himself. Some of you are blaming everybody but it's you. And it's me. I can't get nobody to say nothing right there. That's sin. Oh, my God. To those who know to do right, listen to the word of God, y'all. To those of us who know to do right and not or do right, it is sin. Those who know to do right and choose not to do right, it's sin. So I guess God is going to overlook sin? The very thing that killed him? The very thing that's destroying relationships and marriages and kids and the world? So he's just supposed to turn his back because we up under grace? No. Grace, as I've taught y'all, my God, gives you and I, I and you, an opportunity to make right what's wrong. That's why we got to thank God for his grace and his mercy because it gives us an opportunity to get it right. Sooner or later, if we don't stop, judgment comes. That's the Bible. I didn't taught y'all that. You can't continue to disobey and harden your heart towards the spirit of the living God and think that God will continue to bless you. When God's grace gives you an opportunity to change, to stop, to surrender, or whatever word you want to put on before God's judge, God won't want to judge us. God loves us. He wants the best for you and I. But sooner or later, he got to protect us from our own selves. Because if he don't begin to bring some level of consequences, we will kill ourselves. We will kill our potential. We will kill our marriages. Come on, God. We're going to kill our children. My God, who in my life got to suffer while I remain the same? So God has to bring judgment. It'll go against his sovereignty, man. If he didn't, if he allowed you and I to crash and he didn't try to intervene, he couldn't be a just God. If he didn't step in, my God, and try to detour us to go to the right way, to get on the straight and narrow, if we know he's on the road that leads to destruction. Somebody give God a hand for what the Spirit of God just said. <laughs> Amen. The Spirit of God is following you. I know it ain't all that old hype and all this stuff. This is Bible, man. 
trying to help the church. Sins separate you and I from God. There are sins of commission and omission. These sins will hinder our ability to move forward. Like, write, write this down. I'm moving quickly. Write this down. Speaking doubt and unbelief. Speaking. Speaking doubt and unbelief will hinder you from climbing and moving up the mountain. Always speaking doubt. Always operating in unbelief. The Bible says whatever's not done in faith is sin. Oh, my God. So doubt. Unbelief will keep you and I from moving to the next level. Everybody in here raised their hand, Minister Jason said, we want to go to the next level. We want to move up the mountain to the next level. We want better for our lives, better for our future, better for our children, better for our marriage, better for whatever. You know what I'm saying? But if we got so much doubt, whose report are you going to believe? Are you going to believe God's word? And don't you know the more you read the word, the more stronger you get? Yeah. Yeah. That's why we have so many Christians being defeated because they ain't got no word in them. Jesus is able to resist the temptation, my God, in the wilderness because he had word in him. You got to get some word in you. You need some Bible. That's why I got you the one you're reading. That's why I'm always telling you to read the word of God. I can't do for you what the word of God can do for you. I can't help you like God going to help you. Mm, Thank you, Lord. Speaking doubt and unbelief will keep us from moving to our next level. Everything that is not of faith, as I said, is sin. Watch this. Gossip. And negative talk. Write those down. We talk about shame and low self-esteem. How about gossip? Gossip is a major, major, major tool that the enemy is using. Gossiping. God hates it. He hates it because usually from gossiping come complaining. And he killed them in the New Testament. My God, the 23,000 of them died. I think it was the Corinthians for complaining and murmuring. That's a bad spirit. Always complaining. I thank God for Pastor Trump. He don't mind me saying, he said, Pastor, I got to repent. We was back there praying, get ready to come out. He said, Pastor, I was feeling a little fatigued. I started complaining and all that stuff. And I, God had to remind me how good he's been to me. And I repented to God. Yeah. This was the day. Yeah. Yeah. He said, man, I got to, what I'm going to be complaining about and murmuring about good as God been to me. That I see the Spirit of God convicted him. And he yeah. repented. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, my God. Some of us can gossip. We can complain, be negative, and we don't even repent. Self-sabotaging us from moving higher. We are self-sabotaging ourselves for moving higher. Don't you know, let me share this with you. When we gossip, when we, I didn't say y'all, when we gossip, when we operate in doubt, when we be negative, we got a bad aroma. The aroma, the fragrance, mother, which attracts people. A person that's always gossiping, son, and negative and always... Always, always, always something. You can feel them a mile away. Just look at the attitude. I can sense I'm looking right now. Trust me. Body language says everything. (laughs) (laughs) Dishonor is another one. Dishonor. We never think about that. I know mama didn't do right, but you got to honor the office. I know daddy left, but you got to still honor the office. I know he ain't done nothing for you. I know you're still sitting in the window waiting on him, but you still got to honor the office. Pastor made some mistakes, but you better honor the office. See what I'm trying to say? Touch not my anointed and do my prophet no harm. See, we quote those scriptures when we're feeling good. But we forget about that when we're on the other side of the one doing the dishonoring. Oh, we'll tell somebody when we call ourselves trying to counsel. Girl, be careful. The Bible says, uh, touch not my anointing and do my part. Yeah, that apply to somebody. But when it comes time to you, all of a sudden it don't apply. <laughs> dangerous. Yeah. Very dangerous. When you can tell somebody else to honor something, you know when it's your time, you don't honor it. Mm. Mm. Dishonor will hold you back. I promise you. I have personally, ah, I have personally, personally seen people over the years who are extremely talented and gifted, even more talented than I am, that were held back due to dishonor. Did not honor the bishop. Got ahead of the council of the man of God and has crashed and has shipwrecked. Probably could have been booming by now, but chose. Now he's struggling. Now she's struggling. I've seen it. A part of dishonoring is going against the counsel of your covering. Yes. And then when the consequences come because you dishonored the counsel, 
especially when you have come to you know, when you come to a mentor or you'll come to an overseer yes. and ask them their counsel and they give you godly counsel and you choose to do something opposite, you got to deal with the consequences of that. That's why we as leaders, we as people, we got to be very careful what we're telling people to do. We got to be very careful what type of advice we're giving people because if they go out and try to execute what you told them, my God, and you, what you told them wasn't true, wasn't right, their blood could be on your hand. That's why it's real serious. Suffer the little children, not the kids, those that's young in their faith. Be careful. Be careful what you tell new believers. Be careful what type of advice you're telling people. See what I'm trying to say? Good instruction. Good instruction. We still talking about climbing up the mountain to the next level. These type of things right here, doubt, unbelief, gossip, negative talk, and dishonor will hold people back. I've seen it happen. My God. Mm. Oh, my God. Sometimes uh, he will use, talking about the enemy, uh, God will use different things to test you, to promote you. God will use different situations that I just talked about to test you, to promote you. So he gonna, God will allow somebody to come sit right beside you and start talking negatively about somebody in the ministry. And God going to say, what you going to do? Because, see, you know better. I don't know better, but you know better. So God going to hold you accountable. God can't hold you accountable for something you don't know. But once you know, you are held accountable. And so God will bring somebody and let them sit right beside you to test you. Since you think you all that. You got a title now. You didn't lead some people to Christ now. You minister this, you pastor this, you 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 you, you P12 this and that. Okay, uh, let me see if you're gonna get into some negativity. Let me see if you're gonna dishonor and talk about the the, the the stuff that's going on. Yeah. You just failed a test. Now you're at the bottom where you should have went a step higher. Everything ain't gonna go the way you think it should go. Will you still be positive? People not gonna move to your drum beat. Will you still love them? People going to make mistakes. Can you yeah. forgive them? Yeah. Yeah. We talking about moving up the mountain to the next level. And you can't go if you're not passing the test. Right. Right. Let me get ready. Mm -hmm. Oh, my God. He wants to prune off all the immaturity. Thank you, Holy Ghost. In our lives. According to Hebrews 12, 11, it says, No discipline is enjoyable while it is happening. It's painful. But afterwards, there will be a peaceful harvest of right living. Notice the scripture in the New Living says right living. Lifestyle still matters. When God disciplines you, my God, and prune and cut off, it produces a right lifestyle. You start living right. You start loving right. Come on, somebody. Oh, my God. And, and you start living right for those who are, watch this, the Bible says that are trained. That's Hebrews 12, 11. It says those who are trained behind the discipline. God allows discipline to come, man of God, and woman of God, to train you and I for right living. Your benefit, harvest will come when we accept. The man that accepts constructive criticism will prosper his soul, but to reject it, you condemn yourself. You condemn. Is it possible? And yes, it is. We are condemning our own self. The Bible says if I, could, if I accept constructive, which is I have, not always been able to, but I'm getting better, Accept constructive criticism. And the Bible says my soul, mind, will, and emotions will prosper. That means I'll go up another level. Yeah. But to reject it, I just condemn myself. And now I stay at the bottom. And now you're talking about why is that happening for him and it's not happening for me? Why is it happening for her? Because you condemn yourself because you ain't accepting no constructive criticism. Part of God's sovereignty, my God, is correction. We don't want to be corrected. But correction is good. It is good for me that I was afflicted. Before I was afflicted, I went astray. You need a level of correction. Uh, don't just seek the hand of God. You better seek the, mm, the face of God. And when you seek the face of God, you got to deal with a level of correction. God ain't Santa Claus. Let me give y'all this last one. This is going to be quick. It's going to be quick. It's going to be quick. And then, my God, you got to sow. You got to sow into your future. You got to sow into what you want to accomplish. You got to sow, S-O-W, into what you want to accomplish in life. We must sow the word of God. We must frame the word of God into our next season. Speak a word into your next season. Speak the word into your next season. Speak the word like you just had to do. <laughs> Look at the results sitting beside you. Speak the word. Uh, when you're dealing with circumstances, situations, call those things to be not. as though they are. Look what's sitting beside you. Speak the word into your season. Speak the word. 
My son shall live and he shall not die. Yeah, yeah. Come on, somebody. Ah, yeah, yeah. oh, my God, speak the word until you yeah. cease. Yeah. Speak the word until you see. I'm redundant. Speak the word. Speak the word until your vision. Speak the word until your future. Speak the word until your way with children. Speak the word until your way with husband. Speak the word. Speak the word. So, 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 so. The word. Speak, so, speak, so, speak, so, speak, so. Listen to me. Speak, so, speak, speak, and so, speak, and so, speak, so the word, so the word, so the word. Call those things to be now. Speak, so the word. Call those things to be now. To do that. Speak the word. Don't let doubt. Don't let unbelief. Don't let the, uh, the loss of hope, my God, cause you to stop speaking and showing the word. Oh, my God. A word will change it all. A word will shift it all. A word will call them out. The word will bring them back. So the word. Mm, mm. You got to sow in order to go, baby. Uh, we must sow our time and our efforts into the vision. You got a vision, but you're going to take time to work the, work the plan. I told y'all the late doctor said, while you're sleeping, I'm working. While you're sleeping, I'm working. What he means while I'm sleeping, y'all, while you're sleeping, I'm sowing. I'm sowing time. I'm sowing effort. I'm sowing prayer. My God, into that what God has called me to do. That what God has dropped on the inside of me, I'm sowing into that. Oh, my God, are you investing into yourself? Are you investing in everybody else but instead of yourself? Are you invested in everybody else instead of yourself? Oh, my God. Sooner or later, you got to say, okay, it's time for me to let you go so I can get in. It's okay to be selfish sometimes. Especially when it comes back to when it comes to yourself. It's okay to be selfish. There's a such thing as selfish, being selfish. Just, I don't, just, just take time to take care of you. Take time to take care of you. That's what mine is doing. Take time to take care of you. Take care of yourself. It's okay. It's okay. Take care of yourself, man of God. Take care of yourself. Take care of yourself, woman of God. It's okay, mother. Take care of yourself. Yeah. Sow into yourself sometime. Because people will kill you if you let them. Mm, mm, mm. Let me give you this. Your next season will require new skills. Ah, new skills. I got to develop new skills. The mantle is different. The growth and the stretching. Oh, my God. God dropped in my spirit. You, your capacity has to enlarge. Ah, your capacity, Lawrence Juju Peoples, has to enlarge. Ah, my God. We want everything, but we don't want God to enlarge our capacity. You got to ask God to enlarge your capacity, enlarge your mind, enlarge your territory. See what I'm trying to say? Come on, come on, come on. We, we in this environment, my God. We have allowed our environment to keep us in a mediocrity mentality, a poverty mentality, a less than mentality, my God. You got to expand your wings, baby. You got to enlarge your borders, enlarge your territory, my God, so you can expand your capacity to be effective. Mm. Quit being hedged in. Uh, new skills. Say, God, give me new skills, my God. Who, my God? You got, it's again, you got to sow time and you got to sow effort into developing any area of your life. It takes time and effort. Mm. Oh, my God, you got to sow ties. Yeah, yeah, part of, part of going to the next level, you got to pay your ties, church. I know you don't want to hear it, but it's Bible. It's Bible. Pay your ties. Honor God, honor God, my God. When you are sowing a seed for a specific purpose, let me give you this instruction. Be sure to name your seed. You must name, you must sow your seed with purpose. Yeah. You must be intentional. Yeah. Don't just walk by and just drop some. I don't care if it's a, a widow's might. Name yeah. that seed. Going forward, my God, I decree. My God, every one of you, when you sow into the kingdom of going home for Christ church, you make sure you claim it. Yes. You make sure you name that seed and claim that seed. Give, watch out, it's called, it's called giving with purpose, man. Mm -hmm. Giving with focus is what it's called. Don't just walk by and just put it off in there and, and then hope one day that you get something back. Mm, 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 mm. As I close, God has moved us to a new level as a church. Thank you, Holy Ghost. We have, to face, we have had to face some trials. Yes, we have. And warfare. But can I say this? Write this down. Warfare is good. Warfare is good. Warfare is good. You need some of it. I need it. Warfare develops capacity to hold more, to receive new skills. <laughs> come on, somebody. In order to expand, you got to place people around you that's going to force you to come out your comfort zone. You got to place people around you that's going to make you uncomfortable. Ooh, man, you got to put people around you that know more than you. Are you with me so far? Warfare builds character, and it also builds faith. You need it. To get to our next level, we will have to face bigger giants. And we need new mindsets to defeat them.
When you go to another level, there's bigger giants. Y'all see what's around us? I was reading in the one-year Bible where God used Rahab. Y'all know what her character was. So God gave me a vision of where he has place going off of Christ. Y'all know what walks around her? Rahab's. But if you read Joshua, Rahab did not even know the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. But yet she knew enough to know that God's hand was on the men of God that went over there and spied out the land. And so, my God, because the woman of God life style that she was living, you would think that God couldn't use us. But you know that Jesus come through the blood, the lineage of the a prostitute. Did y'all know that? Don't you know that Rahab is in Hebrews, the 11th chapter, called the Hall of, Hall of uh, the Heroes of Faith? And so God showed me, God used, my God, this woman who didn't live a, mm, a nice lifestyle. <laughs> but he used us to sustain his will, to execute his plan. Quit disqualifying yourself. We all are Rahabs in some capacity. But God used Rahab to save the people of God. Yeah. And so God showed me I placed you right in the vicinity with a bunch of Rahabs. And some of them saying Rahabs, ooh, my God's going to come off in her. They're going to get saved. Watch what I'm telling you. Watch what I tell you. Watch what I tell you. They're going to get saved. And they're going to help you get delivered from the saint. Yeah. God going to use some Rahabs to help you and I get delivered from some stuff. Watch what I tell you. They're going to walk right up off in her. And they're going to catch on fire because they ain't got no church in them. They ain't got no religion in them. All they do is they want to get free. Yeah. And when they get free, they're going to catch on fire and they're going to have some power. Oh, my God, I promise you. Mm. Yeah. 